today I'm going to take a look at the DYUR1. One of the issues with electric bikes is a lot of them are crazy expensive. Some more than $3,000. To me, that doesn't make a lot of sense unless you're using it to replace a car and you already know you can carry everything you need to and go every place you want to on a bike. And that's just not most of my followers. From what I read in my comments, most of you haven't ridden a bike since you were a kid. Day-to-day -day drive a car or take mass transportation, but are open-minded and curious about how much use you'd get out of an e-bike, but not more than a thousand dollars curious. That's too much money to spend on an experiment. Likewise, a lot of car owners are looking at e-bikes as a backup option in case there are more regional gas shortages, as emergency trans transport only and staying folded in the car trunk until then, like a spare tie. For that use case, the price also needs to be reasonable. So I've been looking for solid budget buys to recommend for first-time buyers. DYU was kind enough to send me the R1 to look at. Let's unbox it! and see what kind of e-bike $800 gets us. Okay, I'm going to charge it up, get changed, and take it for a test ride. Uh, 
，呃，反正你找全景相机很多的，就不只限于这个牌子，深圳一大堆。
Enjoy that little ride around Shenzhen. Pros. The R1 is basically what they call a comfort bike. It has a very upright, comfortable riding posture. Honestly, one of the most comfortable bikes I've wheeled. Normally, comfort bikes are a big trade-off because you lose a lot of power and are less aerodynamic when you sit up that way. But in the case of an e-bike, You've got power assist anyway, so why not have some comfort? I think its 20-inch tires are really the sweet spot for a compact city bike. Big enough to glide over bumps, but small enough that I can get it in and out of doorways and such. The battery design is great. It locks in place, removes easily, and you can take it into your home and office to charge it or swap it out with a fully charged one. I hope they sell extra batteries separately because that would be perfect. With no battery, it also has no seat and won't take a standard bike seat, so it's a lot less appealing to steal. Something I really love is that the menu comes with both a schematic of the electronics and the correct torque measurements for all the screws. I wish more manufacturers did stuff like that to make upgrades and repairs easier. The bike has one gear, pedal assist only, no throttle making it safe and very easy to use if you hadn't been on the bike in a few years. The free assist modes offer a very comfortable range of effort you can put in. You don't need to break a sweat if you don't want to. Overall, very comfortable, very easy to ride. Okay, the cons. I'm not thrilled with the open chain. 
one of the issues with commuter bikes is no matter how careful you are or what kind of pants clip you wear, you tend to get grease on your leg. But that's an easy part to add and if you were in an office and will be traveling there, something to consider. Next, as a small person, my rule of thumb for e-bikes is they should weigh no more than half of what I do. A third is ideal. The I1 has an aluminum frame, weighs 20 kilograms, which isn't the lightest I've wheel, but quite reasonable for the size and price. I didn't find myself struggling with it or anything, but that lightweight comes at a cost, power. The bike supports up to 150 kilograms, although with one gear and a 250 watt motor, if you weigh over 100 kilograms, you are going to be helping it a bit when going up any hills over 15 degrees. Last, it's a compact bike, but not a folding bike. This isn't going to fit in your car trunk, maybe the back of your SUV, but as an emergency last mile solution, there are smaller options. Final verdict, the DYUR1 is my topic for a budget. First time e-buy if you are not sure if it's for you and you hadn't ridden a bike in a while. It's incredibly comfortable and easy to ride for errands, commuting, light shopping around town. Great for older and younger riders as well. It's a safe bike. That said, I do not think it is suitable as a disaster or bug out bike. It just doesn't have the cargo capacity and range. It also does not have the very compact size that would make it suitable at last mile solution to keep in your car or trunk for emergency. Say you run out of gas due to shortages and need to go get some, or the highways are jammed and you have to ditch your vehicle. Maybe not a day-to-day -day thing, but it's worth thinking about these scenarios. The R1 is a city bike. For commuting and errands, good for carrying about as much as you can fit in a backpack. Within the range, it's fantastic and a great price. If that seems like a good fit for your needs, I put the link in the description box. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you all next time. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.